Welcome back. Now let's dive into the topic of research and innovation. And let's start by defining those terms that we use on an everyday basis, but that we tend not to define actually. First, research. Research, by and large, is the process of creating something that is new to the world, something that never existed before. It can be a new technology. It can be also a new idea. It can be a new way of organizing the production within a business. In short, research is the process that uses resources, money, equipment, human time, in order to create knowledge. Innovation is something a bit different. Innovation is the fact of introducing something that is new to a given organization and something that creates value. This something new, this innovation, does not need to be new to the world. It could be, for instance, a more efficient way of producing something within a factory that already exists in other factories from the same company. In short, innovation is the process that uses knowledge in order to create value. And there are several kinds of innovation. We tend to talk a lot about disruptive innovation. A disruptive innovation is an innovation that creates a disruption within a specific system, within a market. It's, for instance, something that is so new that it totally changes the game within a particular segment of the economy. For the clean energy transition, disruptive innovation can be very valuable. It can be something that really makes an impact. But this focus on disruptive innovation should not make us forget the importance of the other kind of innovation, what we call sustaining innovation or incremental innovation. Those are the sort of innovation that allow us to do what we already do, but better. We can, for instance, renovate a house for 10% less money. We can, for instance, install new electric uh, power supply lines or wind farms 10% faster. And this is actually also very much important because this will allow to renovate more houses and to install more windmills all over Europe. So both the disruptive innovation and the incremental innovations are important to us. They are important to the clean energy transition. And therefore, we're going to talk about both of them during the rest of this course. One important question that was asked by academics over the past decades was, you know, where does innovation come from? Is it something that falls from the sky? Is it something that is actually created, nurtured within society, within businesses? And over time, those academics came up with six models of innovation. Model number one is the technology push model. It's the idea that you take a technology and you push it from research and development labs to the production phase, to marketing, and then to consumers. This has an impact on policies. For instance, some public policies are in this model of technology push. You give a subsidy to a specific technology in order to push it forward towards the market. The second model is called the market pool. It is also a linear model, but it does go in the reverse direction. First is the idea that it's actually the market, the customers, that are driving innovation. And to respond to this customer demand, marketing is changing and marketing is informing the production phase and the production phase of a company is informing the research and development uh, labs. Model number three is the coupling. It's actually just, you know, the articulation of the two previous models. The first one is the integrated model that, for the first time, tries to look at what is happening in terms of interaction within the company, but also outside of it. On this, it was the creation of model number five, which is the networking model. The networking model puts a lot of emphasis on the networks, the innovation networks that are happening both within a company, but also between some elements of the company and the outside world. For instance, research centers in universities 
academia, but also businesses, customers, um, etc. This networking model is very much influential today, and it is actually uh, the way the European Institute of Innovation and Technology is working as a way to ensure that networks, innovative ecosystems, can actually grow and interact with one another. And then finally, we have num model number six, which is an evolution from the networking model that puts greater emphasis on interaction between, uh, between actors. And it is called the open innovation model. And in Brussels, when it comes to deciding on EU policies, especially innovation, you will hear the term open innovation a lot. So that's it for innovation models. We will see in the next video what is the role technology plays on innovation and we will we'll debunk three myths about innovation.